Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT session on the introduction to the motherboard. Today we're going to be introducing the motherboard. We will also talk about different form factors and then some common factors of the motherboard. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. So let me begin by introducing the motherboard. The motherboard is the physical foundation layer for every system. The motherboard is also known by other names. It can be called the system board, the baseboard, the MB, or the MOBO. The motherboard, along with the BIOS, establishes what the system is and what components may be present. Some motherboards are very simple and some are very complex, but they all do basically the same thing. They lay the foundation for your system. And with that introduction, let's move on to different form factors of the motherboard. Now, the form factor of a motherboard is basically its size, and there are just a couple of main categories. There is the ATX. That is the basic form factor for a full-size, full-power PC. And the ATX size is 305 millimeters by 244. There's also the micro ATX. It's more compact in size, and it usually has a little less capabilities than the ATX. Now, sizes within the micro ATX may vary within a range. At its largest, an ATX motherboard can be 244 millimeters by 244. But it can also go down to 171.45 millimeters by 171.45. The next main form factor category is the ITX, which can also be called the mini ITX. Now this is a low power consuming form factor. It's even more compact than the micro ATX. The ITX form factor often doesn't require the use of a fan for system cooling. The standard size for an ITX motherboard is 170 millimeters by 170 millimeters. Now a couple of special mentions on the ITX form factor are the Nano ITX and the Pico ITX. The Nano ITX is 120 millimeters by 120 millimeters and the Pico is 10 millimeters by 7.2 millimeters. That's tiny. These tend to be used for specialty applications and they're very low power consuming motherboards, but they also have very limited capabilities. Now let's move on to some factors that are common to almost all motherboards. And you notice that I put a caveat in that and we get to begin with a disclaimer. As a general rule, these factors are present on all ATX and ITX motherboards, but it is up to the manufacturer to decide what is present and what is not. So what are these common factors? Well, they all have a spot for a CPU, for a central processing unit. All of them have spots for RAM. Some is removable, some are not. Almost all have chipsets, the Northbridge, Southbridge, and BIOS, although newer Intels don't require the Northbridge. They all have power slots. That's for the main power and in some cases for CPU auxiliary power. Some of the optional connections that are commonly found on motherboards are fan connectors, expansion slots, back panel connections, and front panel connections. Now, I said these are optional because they're not present on every single motherboard and are highly dependent upon the manufacturer. Now, that concludes this session on the motherboard. I introduced the motherboard. I talked about different form factors of the motherboard, and then I talked about some common factors of motherboards. Now, on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm sure we'll do it again soon.